What is going on everyone? Why don't we do another United States Regions video? Today we're going to talk about the southeastern section of the United States. Now it depends on who you talk to or what you read, but the list of states that are considered southeast varies. I've seen five versions. Even the US Census Bureau can't make up their mind. I've seen three of their versions. The one that includes the most states has Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Florida, Maryland, Delaware, and the District of Columbia. That one seems weird. I've never thought Maryland, Delaware, or the District of Columbia should be involved in that but apparently they are. The one that we're gonna go with in this video is a more common one. It has North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Mississippi. That means Arkansas and Louisiana are both part of the South Central portion of the United States. Have I confused you yet? Don't feel bad. I'm a little confused myself, and that has nothing to do with my medication. So why don't we forget about my medication and watch my top 10 places to live in the southeastern United States. Number 10, Petal, Mississippi. Imagine that, Mississippi made it onto a list about good things. It's kind of rare. Petal is a great place to live, especially if you don't have a bunch of money or you just want to live in a nice, safe place that's affordable. The city is located just outside of Hattiesburg, Mississippi, which is the state's fourth largest city. Petal is a great place where you can save money and live very comfortably all at the same time. You'll save the most on housing. Home prices here are about 23% lower than the national average. And on top of that, the cost of living is kind of low too. They have a pretty decent skate park in the middle of town, so that's kind of cool. And if you can get past the heat of Mississippi summers, this is a solid place to live. Number nine, Taze Valley, West Virginia. Taze Valley is about 25 minutes west of the state's capital of Charleston. Taze Valley is a great place for employment opportunities. The unemployment rate in Taze Valley is 47% lower than the national average. This town is great in almost every single category. You can find a lot of bad things going on in West Virginia. Taze Valley isn't one of them. Very little crime happens here. Great schools and low home prices. They have about 13,000 people living the good life in Taze Valley. Even more so if your name's Jack Whitaker. He's the winner of the largest undivided lottery prize in history and the third largest jackpot in US history. He lived in Taze Valley at the time of his win. No word on where he lives now. Sadly, not even a year after he won all that money, he was parked in front of a strip club well, his car was, he was in the strip club, and thieves made away with 545000 in cash that he carried around in a suitcase. When they asked him why he'd carry around so much money with him in a suitcase, his response was the best response ever, because I can. Number eight, Morrisville, North Carolina. Morrisville is an extremely safe area with a crime rate that's 44% lower than the national average. However, the crime in the city does happen. It's normally property crime. Most people don't hurt each other here. There's not a lot of violent crimes going on here. And that's always a good sign that people in this town are decent and respectful. Morrisville has been voted the best city in North Carolina more than once. The income per capita in Morrisville is 39% higher than the national average. There's really not a lot wrong in this town. It's a little, the cost of living is a little high. Okay, like any place that's really, really nice. The town is situated between Raleigh and Durham, North Carolina, and it's really close to the airport. This place is like a win-win no matter what you do. Number seven, Farragut, Tennessee. Farragut is home to about 20,000 residents in Eastern Tennessee, just outside of Knoxville. The city is a great place for jobs. The unemployment rate is very low at 2.4%. The income per capita in Farragut is 62% higher than the national average. Considering they're in Tennessee, that already Tennessee has a really low cost of living, I'm sure for about 50,000 a year, you're living pretty good. Now, not that 500K in a briefcase outside of a strip club good, but you're doing all right. The schools and crime stats are gold stars on the collar of this town. I'm not even kidding. This is a really nice town. <laughs> Number six, Malden, South Carolina. Malden is a great place in northwestern South Carolina, just about 15 minutes outside of Greenville. Malden has some great schools in the city, including a high school which ranked 9.2 out of 10 and has a 90% graduation rate. However, this year Malden High was a victim of some senior pranks, including a portrait made in sticky notes of the principal. Thankfully, Principal Peak wasn't upset. He actually smiled for a couple pictures. It was kind of cool. The seniors at my high school many, many years ago did something very similar. They wrote F.U. West High in blood at the school's entrance. Sure, it was fake Halloween blood, but regardless, our principal wasn't too pleased. Side note, that was the second weirdest thing I've ever seen written in blood. The first thing was send nudes. <laughs> 
Number 5. Suwannee, Georgia Suwannee is a small town right off the Chattahoochee River with about 18,000 residents, and they're doing very well. Suwannee is an incredibly safe area with an overall crime rate that's a little bit less than the national average. That's solid considering they're pretty much a suburb, almost, of Atlanta. Atlanta's not the worst in crime, but they're definitely not the best. What makes this city safe is probably their police force. The Suwannee police really work hard to keep the community safe. I've been here a few times. I have a friend that lived there for, you know, a very long time. He just moved back. God, he just moved back to Idaho last summer. In past videos, I've talked about a friend that I went to Falcon Games with. This is the dude. He got out of the military 22 years ago, and it took him this long to leave Georgia and go back to Idaho. He said he hates Georgia, but he misses Swanee. He hates everything, so that's saying something for Swanee. Number four, Homewood, Alabama. Homewood is just south of Birmingham and has outstanding public schools. The middle and elementary schools have a rating of seven out of 10 or higher. While the high school has a six out of 10 rating, its graduation rate is very high. About 94% of the students here will make it through all four years of high school. That's about 10% higher than the national average and about 13% higher than the state average. And this is all happening in Alabama. I may talk a lot of trash about Alabama. Most of the time it's directed toward the local and state government. The people of Alabama are are always good people. And stop typing. They also have some seriously effed up human beings, but what state doesn't? Everything but cost of living in Homewood is graded an A or A+. And the cost of living thing? That's only a C. Some of the other places on here, that was graded an F, cost of living. Not bad, Homewood. <laughs> Number three, Oldsmar, Florida. Oldsmar is a great place for families. The crime rate is very low. You have a one in 48 chance of being a victim of a crime here. The school ratings are great. The graduation rate is about 90%, which is 8% higher than the national average. To make things better, the cost of living here is relatively low. Now, this community is between Clearwater and Tampa, sort of. What is really strange about this, I never heard of the place till my researcher told me about it. I've been to Tampa several times. Been to Clearwater. I've never heard of Oldsmar. And it's a legit city by Florida standards. I mean, it's got a Walmart. <laughs> Number two, Brandermill, Virginia. When I listed the states that would be on this list, I didn't say Virginia, just to see how many Southerners would get triggered. When you say Virginia isn't really a Southern state, they go all the way back to the Civil War and they get so pissed they start throwing the word Yankee around, which honestly means nothing to anyone that would ever be considered a Yankee. I mean, unless, of course, you play for the Red Sox, that might piss you off, but it's just a outdated word that nobody cares about. Brandermill is the place to go in the state when you want to buy an affordable house. House. The city is just west of Richmond and has some low housing prices. The median home price here is about $233,000, which is about equal to the national average, but it's 6% lower than the state average. This is another place that has good schools, low crime, jobs, and not an incredibly terrible cost of living. It's a solid place to live. And number one. Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Fort Thomas is located in northern Kentucky, right next to Cincinnati and the Ohio River. The city is extremely safe, with a very low crime rate that's 73% lower than the national average. Although the crime rate is low, the city might start having some problem with some older catfish people. A resident who recently turned 102 admitted to catfishing his now wife. When he was 83, he made a Match.com account and said he was 63. Fortunately, it worked out for him. It worked out, but it's really weird. I know a guy that lives here. He shouldn't because he makes almost no money, but his grandparents did leave him a house and a little bit of money. Like, not a lot of money. And I'm sure it and maybe the house are gone by now because he's probably the only person I've ever known that has zero common sense. I'm not even exaggerating. This guy tried to tell me one time that the Ohio River switches directions at night. Three of us sat there and tried to explain it to him for an hour, and he thought we were BSing him. I'm not even kidding. But Fort Thomas, Kentucky is an extremely nice place to live. All right, so that's my top 10 best places to live in the southeastern region of the United States. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Don't forget to hit the like button. Leave me a comment. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.